everybody and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. Today's video will be another installment in my fan theory series where we analyze popular fan theories and look at the evidence for and against the theory. Then we make a determination if the theory is credible or not. In this installment we'll be analyzing one of the Forsaken and what exactly he was up to during the books. Before getting into the video, let me give a major shout out to my sponsor Audible.com. Audible is the largest supplier of audiobooks in the world, with thousands of books in their collection. If you haven't tried audiobooks yet, I highly recommend them. For me, it's great to be able to listen to a book while I'm making dinner on my Alexa, or in my headphones while I'm working out, or just driving around in the car. If you don't have as much time as you'd like to sit around and read, or if you just want a different experience on one of your favorite books, like The Wheel of Time, audiobooks are worth checking out. If you want to try it out and you aren't sure if you like it or not, Seriously, check out the offer that Audible gives my viewers. You can get a 100% free audiobook that you can keep regardless of whether you want to get the Audible service or not. And just by signing up for that free trial, you really help support me here and what I'm doing on the channel. All you have to do is head to www.audibletrial.com forward slash nabless and sign up for a one month free trial. You don't have to keep the service if you don't want to and you don't even have to pay a dime, but you still get to keep your audiobook. Tons of you have already taken advantage of it. If you aren't one of those people yet, check it out. So let's throw up a spoiler warning for the video. Today's video carries a spoiler rating of red through the final book of the series, A Memory of Light. If you haven't read all of the books and you don't want to be spoiled, please watch at your own risk. You've been warned, folks. So as with all my fan theory videos, we're going to first take a look at the facts of the theory and what arguments for and against the theory might be. At the end, I'll give you my opinions on the theory, and in this case, we're really looking hard at what Demon Dread was up to during the books, and primarily addressing the long popular fan theory that Mazram Taim was Demon Dread. Obviously, we know from Winner's Heart and A Memory of Light that this isn't true definitively, but that doesn't mean there wasn't convincing evidence for this theory in the novels. The difficulty with Demon Dread is we don't really get any direct per point of views other than one, and we don't really learn anything of his actual plans until the very end of the books. So we first meet Demon Dread's character in the prologue of Lord of Chaos, where he's at Sheol Ghul meeting with Shaidar Haran and the Dark One in the Pit of Doom. He is given instructions concerning what to do with Rand. He later relays this information to a meeting of Semarag, Grendel, and Masana, where he tells them to let the Lords of Chaos rule, and then devises a plan with the other Forsaken. At the end of the books, after the events of Rand's capture and torture at the hands of the Tower Aes Sedai, and then subsequent rescue by Perrin's army and the Ashaman under the command of Mazrum Taim at the Battle of Dumai's Wells, Demon Dread reports back to the Dark One and asks the Dark One rhetorically, have I not done well? implying that he had a major hand in events in the book and that it all went according to plan. Given that Rand's kidnapping had already been in the works by Masana before Demon Dread's meeting with the Dark One, and the only real conflict that Demon Dread could have been involved in was Rand's kidnapping or the rescue, this was one of the biggest pieces of evidence that Demon Dread may have been involved in some way with the Black Tower. Additionally, there is ample evidence that Taim was, in fact, Demon Dread in disguise. We can see evidence lending credence to this from the moment Mazram Taim is introduced to us in Chapter 2 of Lord of Chaos. He is brought to Rand in the courtyard of the Palace of Camelin as he stands there with Bat Davram Bashir, a man who had previously met Taim and was very hostile towards him, as Mazram Taim had ravaged Saldea during his time as a false dragon. Davram Bashir doesn't recognize Taim at first, and Taim explains this away by saying he is shaved due to the heat down in the south, but Davram Bashir still seems really skeptical. It would seem odd for Robert Jordan to devote time in the book to Davram Bashir being skeptical for this to be completely false. In that same meeting, as Taim and Bashir argue, Taim hints of knowledge of a very sophisticated type of compulsion, something that none of the channelers of the current age could do with any real power. He taunts Bashir, saying that he left four people unable to do anything or have any other desires other than to serve. That's really odd for a Third Age channeler. Also in the same conversation, Taim presents Ran with a seal to the Dark One's prison, and implies that he knows that others are broken, and that the one that he gave Rand could be broken with a hammer. This is a level of knowledge that none but a few Aes Sedai would have even had, lending credence to the fact that Taim was more than just a simple self-taught false dragon. When Rand mentions the Forsaken, something that everyone else around was terrified of or in denial about, 
Taim doesn't seem to flinch as Rand talks about them in detail, and Taim seems to indicate some knowledge that Rand had fought a few of them, something that was not really public. Later, as Rand gives Taim a tour of the farm that would become the Black Tower, he shows Taim the weave for traveling, and Taim seems unsurprised. Only moments later, without any prompting from Rand or anyone else, Taim scoffs at the fact that Rand doesn't know how to test for the male ability to channel, saying, you can travel, but you don't know how to test for the talent. This is very telling for two reasons. For one, he refers to it by the Age of Legends name, for traveling, that's not common to anyone now. They wouldn't have known to call it that talent. Secondly, that he even knows how to test someone for the ability to channel is kind of odd. This doesn't seem something that a self-taught false dragon who had been captured would have learned. When had he ever taught anyone to channel? Both of these things imply more knowledge than a third age channeler should know. Also during the farm tour, Taim seems to have intricate knowledge of how many of them should be able to learn to channel, what the process of learning looks like, and how long it should take, implying that he has taught people to channel before, which is something that he should know up to this point. When Rand mentions that one of the Forsaken could try to get in the group, Taim seems visibly shaken and surprised, almost as though Rand had found him out infiltrating before kind of recovering. In the same visit, Rand mentions the cleansing of Sidene, and Taim says something along the lines of, you don't know how much power that would take. Wait, do you have a Sahangriol? All of this seems to imply that he knows more than he should. There is yet more evidence that makes Mazram Taim seem more than he is. In another visit to the farm from Rand, Taim refers to the Aiel that follow Rand as the so-called Aiel, something that is only ever mentioned in the books otherwise by Moradin, which would also make sense if Taim was a Forsaken, as he would know that the Aiel were simply pacifist servants back in the Age of Legends, not these warriors that they are now. That's why he calls them so-called Aiel. He speaks to Rand later about Samael being holed up in Ilion, and that if Taim were in his place, he'd put wards around the city among other defensive tactics. Again, this implies knowledge of intricate warding and knowledge of those weaves, as well as general battle knowledge in using the one power in battle. Well, Demon Dread was a great general. This just seems off for somebody who's a self-taught false dragon channeler. In A Crown of Swords, it's revealed that Taim taught the Sidene version of healing to Dammer Flynn. Again, where did Taim learn this? He hasn't demonstrated any knowledge of healing to this point, so it all seems a bit off. So there's all this information that supports Taim being something more than a simple third age channeler, and it is strongly implied that he is, in fact, Demon Dread in disguise. There wasn't really a ton of direct evidence that said this couldn't be true, other than saying Demon Dread would never put himself below Rand like he does in Taim's situation. Although we see Taim visibly upset at being placed under Rand a lot. We don't get confirmation that this isn't true until Winter's Heart, when the renegade Asherman Kissman indicates that both Taim and Demon Dread had separately ordered him to kill Rand, clearly demonstrating that they aren't the same person. We get the last definitive statement in the prologue to A Memory of Light, where Taim and Demon Dread share screen time. So how do you reconcile the fact that the evidence seems to indicate that they were kind of the same person until all of a sudden they were clearly not? It seems, according to Brandon Sanderson, that Robert Jordan may have originally intended for them to be the same person, and then changed his mind as it all seemed too obvious. Brandon made this comment on a Reddit post, basically saying that he believed that Robert Jordan had changed his mind about Taim based on what he read in the notes. The change, that Taim was recruited and taught by Demon Dread, fits continuity-wise, so the story ended up working out. For a long time, this theory was up there with who killed Asmodian theories as one of the most talked about theories on the Wheel of Time forums. I think it was pretty interesting how this all played out. I was one of the people who actually thought that it was true for a while, although it seemed that Robert Jordan was backing away from it the further you read into the novels, and then when we hit Winter's Heart, it was pretty obvious. When I read it in Winter's Heart, I thought that he was intending us, like he was trying to mess with us. Um, I didn't really think that he had changed his mind. Um, that was news that Brandon had brought us. So what do you all think about Taim? Do you think he was originally intended to be Demon Dread in disguise? Or was Robert Jordan just leading us on the whole time? Were you okay with them being separate people? And most importantly, do you think they should be combined for the television show? Please let me know what you all think in the comments below. And while you're at it, please smash that like button on the video and subscribe to the channel. Both of those things really help the channel grow, and I very much appreciate it. Speaking of appreciating, I also very much appreciate those of you over supporting me on Patreon. If you want to support what I'm doing here, the absolute best thing you can do is check out my Patreon page. 
There are tons of cool rewards that are exclusive to patrons, like access to the maps I've been making, as well as some other fun stuff. Thank you all for the support. The link is in the description below. Thanks guys for watching, and until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. Mistress up above, slipping on a rope of blue. She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free. Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?